What's up everyone? Today I want to talk about Scott Barnes makeup brushes. I ordered mine a little over a month ago and so I wanted to share the things that I have come to experience and learn in that time. I want to run through all the brushes, share my thoughts on them, talk about which ones I would recommend, and also make some comparisons to some more affordable and similar brushes. So let's go ahead and dive in. First up, let's get to know our brushes, which sounds a little like we're on a dating game show. First up, let's get to know brush number 67. He's a Pisces who likes long walks on the beach and just wants to hold your hand. Kidding, we're not doing that the whole time. Let's actually just get to know what each one of these brushes does. While we're on it though, let's go ahead and talk about the number 67. So this is called the Good Face Brush and it's basically recommended for applying powder, loose or pressed over large surface areas. So your face, I personally love this for applying setting powder loosely or layering it on all across the face. It's a little big to get in your under eye area, but because of its large size, it's good for cheeks, forehead, and then even getting down into your body area, which is how it's recommended to use as well. If you want like full scale body bronzing or setting maybe a full body bronzer, this is a great brush to reach for. Next up, number 66, this is called the Powder Sheer Brush. So the bristles are not quite as densely packed as the number 67 that I just talked about. It's also very differently shaped. It is kind of a lopsided half moon that's a little pinched in. It makes it really great, the shape anyway does, for applying and layering up bronzers because it fits really nicely in this cheek area. It's also thin enough to where you get a more controlled application of powder around the perimeter of your face. That's how I have liked to use this. However, if you just want a lighter application of powder, this is a good brush to go with. Whether it is blush, you can sweep it back on the cheeks really easily. Even in the under eye area, because of its shape, you can just tap loose powder or setting powder under that area easily as well. It's just a very versatile brush that gives you a little bit more precision than that previous brush that I just talked about. Speaking of precision application, next up is the number 64. And even though it is called the highlighter, it is such a multi-use brush as many of these are, but the shape for this one in particular and the density of this makes it really great for packing and building color in or powder in your under eye area, applying blush. You do want to be careful though, because this can give you a pretty dense blush application. It picks up pigment really, really well given the brush density. Then that taper tip also makes it really nice for applying contour. If you press, apply a little bit more pressure to get a broader application, it's like a bronzer slash contour. And then same for getting in the perimeter of the face. Also great for highlight as well. Just taking the tip here and either getting something more precise in the outer corner, like you know I love to do, or taking a more broad edge and really sweeping it across the cheeks and really wherever else you want a highlighter. Next up is the number 65 brush. This is called the Flawless Face Brush. And again, a very unique design and silhouette to this guy. So you have a symmetrical half moon shape, but when you look at the profile, it is thicker in the middle and tapered and pinched in around the edges, which makes this, and is very densely packed. So it makes this great for buffing and blending both liquid and powder. I've seen Bailey Sarian use this for foundation. I personally used it today to blend in concealer because that tapered edge makes it really easy to get and buff and pat in that under eye area. You can use this with cream contour. I also use that for this today to blend my Huda Beauty Tan Tour in the contours of my face. And Scott himself on the website recommends using this to quote, toast the edges, his technique for going into a bronzer and really bronzing up the edges of the face. He doesn't specify powder or bronzer. He doesn't specify powder or cream or liquid, but I can say the bristles are so dense in here. You're gonna pick up a lot of powder if you do use this for a powder product. Product. So would make it great for like a powder foundation if you just want a full coverage powder foundation across the face, but be prepared if you use this for something more pigmented, maybe deeper than your skin tone to bronze up, you can definitely overdo it easily because it's so, so densely packed. Last up for our face brushes is the number 68. This is the foundation brush and it is a stippling brush. Even though you totally can, like I mentioned before, use the number 65 as a foundation brush, this is technically the foundation brush in the collection and I really like like this. I talked about this in a previous video as kind of reintroducing me to stippling brushes and actually getting me to like them. I felt like they had been very streaky in the past, hard to buff product in. I just didn't like how they had applied product. Um, this totally made 
made me rethink it. I actually like that it keeps me from overdoing my foundation. It shears it out a little bit, yet I still get the same buffed and flawless blended look into my face. And really the same could be said for all cream products because I then today went on to apply this liquid brush from M Cosmetics and it made very quick work just dabbing a little bit on the bristles, which is why they are slightly tinted pink and patting that along my cheeks. It made blending very, very easy. Now let's move on to the eye brushes, starting first with the number 62. This is called the Eye Blender Brush and very appropriate in my opinion because I don't think there is a place in your eye or face area, honestly, that this thing cannot blend. It is a little bit fluffy, but tapered on the end so you can get a pretty precise blend right in the deepest part of your crease, but then it's incredibly easy to start buffing in larger motions and really smoke that color out beyond the crease, up to your brow bone, even on the lid area. It's very easy to kind of press this against your eyelid, flatten it out so that you can pat and really build color on your lid as well, which is actually how I've gotten the color that I'm wearing in my outer corner here today. I took one shade in the crease and then going back in with the same brush, just patted that in the outer corner, kind of going between patting and sweeping motions through my crease to blend all of that out. So another great multitasker. Then we have the number 63, which is called the Eye Winger. And essentially it's a very mini version of the number 66 brush for the face. So the shape here not only makes it ideal for like getting in your crease, if you really wanna build up that shade in your crease, blending it either up or down, depending on how you apply your shadow to this thing. But as the name suggests, it's also great for creating an angle, a very smoky angle along the lash line area to wing your makeup out. I've really come to like this because it really goes beyond me having to try and visualize the line I'm creating when I wing out or smoke out my eyeliner. It, it I can stamp it down and really drag it in so to make sure it follows the line that I'm trying to create. There is no blend dragging it out, kind of hoping I'm making something symmetrical. As long as I am following the line of my lower lash line and I just stamp it down right there, it creates the exact shape that I need for a wing or a smoky blown out winged sort of eyeshadow look. This is a really great brush for that. Moving on to the number 61 brush. This is called the eye fan brush. And again, kind of a little mini me version of the larger face number 65 brush here. So the eye fan brush is densely packed, just like that larger face counterpart. And again, it has that same symmetrical half moon shape to it. So the density of it makes it really nice for packing on powder across the lid, but that half moon shape is ideal for blending it in throughout the crease. It makes her a really easy cut ish crease kind of look. It's not all that precise because it is fluffier on its edge, but boy, does it make it so easy to do the exact combination of patting and blending and sweeping across the lid all in one brush and making sure you're following the natural contour of your eye and not just kind of guessing at it. Nearing the end of our brushes, let's talk about the number 60. This is the eye and lip duality. It has an uneven curved shape to it as well. And then you turn it on its side and you see it is razor thin, like so, so thin and rigid without being uncomfortable to use on the eye. So like it mentions on the website, this does not deform. You can count on this creating an ultra ultra sharp line, whether it's on your lips or your eyes. But more than that though, the shape, it's like a flat shader brush. So it's not just good for creating sharp lines or even smudging very precise areas like along your lower lash line, drawing a cut crease if that's what you want. But that shape, that flatness about it also makes it great for packing on colors across the lid, whether they are dry, whether you're foiling them with a mixing medium like a setting spray or something like Inglot's Duraline. This is a great brush for working with those mediums as well. And then last up, we have our number 59 brush. This is the Lip and Eye Precision Liner. So kind of similar to the last brush, but really it is like an updated version of a classic brow brush. It has a razor sharp straight straight edge. I would say it's even a little bit thicker than the eye and lip duality. So I think that makes it great for doing your brows, getting some really nice fluffiness to your brows if you use it for that. And it's also very wide. I would say it's maybe almost two times the size of your average angled brow brush, which is really helpful in making quick work of your brow area or your lip area, wherever you happen to be using it. But the main differentiator between these two, they're both great for precision for eyes and lips as well. But the duality brush, because it has that curve to those brushes, it's really great at getting in more precise areas like around the edges of your lips where things are a little bit more rounded in the crease of your eye area 
area, places where an angled liner might just not be able to cover because of the shape. All right, now that we've met our contestants, let's talk about what I have learned in using them for over a month at this point. So first I wanna start with just across the board, the brushes themselves, all of them have pretty weighted handles. So they feel very luxurious. I don't know what it is about a weighted handle that does this to me, but it makes the balance very nice, like some thought and care went into how this would feel in your hand as you're actually using it. And it makes it just feel really well ba balanced. It makes it feel really luxurious, which it should for the price tag. The other thing is when it comes to washing, I had heard from a few people that once they washed their brushes, they felt that the bristles got a little bit itchy, scratchy, more stiff. I have washed my brushes once, which as I say it out loud, I do realize how disgusting that is, but moving on, I wash my brushes with the Cinema Secrets quick drying rinse free formula. So it's not the typical soap and water sort of situation. I have not found that my bristles have gotten coarse or stiff in the least, especially with something like this duo fiber, which in the past, back when I, you know, used these years and years ago, I would find that washing would kind of make these very stiff and really not as comfortable to use on the skin, but have not experienced that with any of these brushes, at least with the method of washing that I am doing. Also, no shedding. No shedding during use, no shedding when I am washing them, have not experienced any sort of hair fallout with these at all. All of this is really just to say that these feel like really well-made brushes that are going to withstand use over many uses years to come. The brushes that have become fixtures in my daily routine have been the Sheer Powder Brush, the number 66. I really love this for bronzing and contouring all over the face, as well, like I mentioned before, just a sheer application of powder across the face, whether it's a buildable blush, a powder in the under eye area, this is just such an amazing multitasker that offers more precision than your average powder brush. The other thing that I really liked is the foundation or stippling brush. I really like how it shears out my foundation, keeps me from going overboard with the application, but I do want to caveat this by saying that this is the first stippling brush I'd used in a very long time because I'd been so put off by them for a while, so I'm not necessarily saying that this is the best stippling brush because I haven't used that many, I just know that this is the stippling brush that got me to love stippling brushes again. So I think that's worth noting. The other two brushes that I just love, love, love are the numbers 59 brush. This is the precision eye and lip. It's the angled one with the straight edge, not the rounded one. I do love this. I just find that I don't have as much of a need for it in, you know, for its rounded edge. I primarily use the number 59 to, for my brow area. I use this with my dip brow gel to kind of stamp and, and blend that out throughout my brow area. It just does a really good job at getting the job done and doing it quickly. And then last up, I love the angled shadow brush, the number 63, and I love it for exactly that. I have found myself using this more and more as a guide to smoke out my shadows in the right direction. Sometimes one eye will be more of a rounded, it'll kind of like today. I didn't use this brush today, and over here, it's kind of dipping below my lower lash line to create a rounded effect. Over here, I'm getting that kind of winged shape, and this just helps me ensure that I'm keeping things symmetrical because it acts not only as a blender, but as a guide for where that wing should go. I do have an honorable mention, the number 65. This I really do love for applying cream contour, and maybe it will become an everyday fixture once I go back to applying it more regularly. But over the past month, as I've been using these, I made the switch to powder, bronzer, slash contour. And because of that, I feel like this guy hasn't gotten as much love. But once the warmer months come where I'm heavy into cream products and I really need something that can buff and blend and gives me that kind of precision, I have a feeling that I will start picking this up more because unlike the foundation brush, this does a great job at shearing things out. The number 65 will be a little bit more heavy handed, I feel, because it's so much denser, but because it has that unique shape and those those tapered tips at the end, it just is gonna be a lot more useful in more precision application like concealer or blush or uh, contour like I have enjoyed it for in the past. And that's not to say that the brushes that I didn't mention as being everyday favorites aren't good. I just haven't noticed them filling a, a void that I really hadn't had before using 
using these brushes. Now, let's move on to comparisons. First, I wanna start with the number 67. This is that big, fluffy powder brush that I really love, but it's very, very similar to my Morphe E41. Roughly the same shape, pretty much the same density, and both do similar things in terms of buffing powder lightly all across the skin and big enough to apply powder to the body. These are very, very similar, and the Morphe one is well made. I've had this one for over three years at this point, have an experience shedding, and it's held up really well. So those are very similar. I also want to share the Sigma F25 and how it is similar to the Scott Barnes number 64. More differences between these two than the comparison I just made, but with the Sigma, it's a little bit fluffier, but you still get that same tapered edge. And prior to using the Scott Barnes brush, I used the Sigma for exactly the same reasons. Uh, to apply my contour, buff it out into a bronzer, tap on some blush, brush on some highlight. Like these are both infinitely versatile face brushes that I highly recommend you check out if you want to do any of those things. And last up is a comparison for my beloved number 66 sheer powder brush. Immediately when I saw this, I was reminded of the Real Techniques Rebel Edge Set that I have a review of. You can uh, click the I or check the description for a link if you wanna go watch that. But basically the Rebel Edge Trio came out and they are similarly angled brushes. You get a large one that is great for applying powder all over the face although not quite as precise as I would like it for, you know, more narrow portions of my face, it is very wide. In fact, that is the main difference between all of these Rebel, well, two of these Rebel Edge brushes and the number 66 brush. Look how much wider those are compared to each other. So the Rebel Edge just gives you a little bit less control, allows you to, or doesn't allow you to be quite as precise as a sheer powder brush, but it still gives you that angled edge if that is what you are after. Um, similarly, for the medium Rebel Edge brush, this is a little bit better and more attuned to more narrow places like on your cheeks, maybe more precise contouring, but it's just not quite as large. So you, you know, it takes a little bit more time to cover the same surface area. And then the last comparison is actually, it's the small one meant for the eye area and is very similar to the number 63. However, unlike the other two brushes, the Real Techniques Rebel Edge is much, much thinner than the number 63 from Scott Barnes. And I like the fluffiness of the Scott Barnes because it makes such quick work out of blending. This is really great if you want a more precise line, although it's not that precise because the brushes or the bristles are still fluffy. So it's kind of, for me, it's kind of an awkward in-between, whereas the Scott Barnes commits to being fluffy, it commits to being angled, it does everything you need it to do, whereas the Real Techniques just, it takes more time, it's not quite as precise, unless you want to use it for your under eye area, and then it is actually maybe a little bit better for that just because it's a little bit easier to go overboard with Scott Barnes because of its fluffiness. Oh, and then the last comparison I wanted to make, there really isn't any one, where is it? Any one brush that exactly dupes the number 62. There are just so, so many similar brushes out there that accomplish similar things that I've used for similar things, such as this one's from Morphe. It's the E17. It's a little bit shorter, but similarly fluffy. There is this one from Makeup Geek. I don't even know if she still makes this one, the crease brush again, a little bit shorter. There is also this one from Sigma, which is the E45. It is much more tapered on the end. So like that Scott Barnes brush is gonna help you do more precise work out in the crease, yet give you that fluff to buff and blend. None of these have identical shapes. They all do work a teensy bit differently to give you different effects, but roughly I do use them for similar things. So tell me in the comments, have you tried any of Scott Barnes brushes? Which are your favorites if you had? And if not, have you seen any that are similar in your collection? and have given you new ideas. Now that you've heard how some of these are used, are you gonna try new techniques with your existing brushes? Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.